All right, guys, I'm Rabia. And I'm Matt. And this is Sound Like on Anderson's TV. Morning. Morning. We've been blessed with the sound of cranked amplifiers next door. We have, and that's also what we're going to try and do ourselves. It certainly is. Today, we're doing Tony Iommi by Busting the Bank. Yes, and it's been about three, over three years since we did without busting. So really? So it's about time to get loud. Really? Really. find some guitars. 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 So we're in the land of expensive Gibsons. We are. We're going to look, obviously get an SG. That's yeah. the Iomi thing. Last time we got an Epiphone SG with the, wasn't it the Tony Iommi signature? It was. And then I had, I had one as well, which was a Gibson with P90s. Right, okay. Um, but I think this time it would be more accurate if you go guitar for Iommi yeah. and I go bass with a Gita Butler. I could have sworn Tony Iommi used to use P90s, but that's just not the case, is it? If you Google, for some reason I thought you did. If you have a little Goog, you can see it's double hums most of the time. It's double humbuckers. A black SG with double humbuckers. Okay, well, there. I mean, there's a there's a guy. We could go. We could go really fancy. <laughs> yeah, we'll get one of these. I'm not going to get one of these high performance SGs, but just saying. Yeah. It's like the least SG SG you've ever seen, isn't it? That is, that's a year or so old now, I think, that, that yeah. model. Um, yeah, this he's is, played black. SG. This isn't the flat black, it's got a bit of a trans going on. Uh, is that a high performance one as well? This is a, no, it's a USA SG Modern. So it's okay. slightly more, it's got locking tuners, that kind of So that it's kind a of modern, business. yeah, but what are the, so Clear knobs. now because we've got modern high performances and all that stuff, I'm curious if the pickups in that are more modern voiced. Well, let's look that up. Because if not, then you literally we're going to go classic something, just yeah, up yeah, SG. yeah, and we'll just sacrifice the color black. Or but, P90 SG. So we did a little bit of research. We did. It turns and out these are burst buckers. Burst bucker pros, mm. which apparently enhance the vintage edge of the regular burst bucker. So if they're if they're describing it as having a vintage edge, then I guess you know will be suitably vintage. Yeah, because to be honest, this is by busting, and you know how we like to splash the cash, and the standard SGs are only 900 pounds, which is. It's still it's, a lot it's of still money. An expensive guitar. But with this being, what's this? 1649. Yeah, that's more suitable for our by busting kind of budget. So, yeah, why don't we try? Let's have a go. Let's see what it sounds like. In the land of amplifiers. Yes, a Tony Iommi is a Laney man. He is. Now, although there aren't actually any Laneys on the shop floor, we do know of one, which is in the video room. Yep. And it's sold in Andertons. It's the LA30BL. Which is a 30 watt head and comes with a matching, looks like a 4x12, but it's a 2x12 cab. Yeah, hand wide in England. And I remember when it came in and Robin Lee did a demo of it, and it was like you could really get that IOMI really loud break up amplifier sound with it. So we might have to load box it because. They'll be loud, yeah. It's not the kind of, it's not a modern design, so you can't like crank the preamp and turn down the master, you have to gun it. Yeah, and that's, I, I imagine that's exactly what he used to do. Yeah. So now we need some pedals. Pedal predicaments. Yeah, so he's not a big pedal guy, but two key components. One is a Dallas Range Master, the other is a Wah. Mm -hmm. So last time... It was the Caitlin Bread Sabra Cadabra. It was, and some of you pointed out that that is actually his drive sound plus the Dallas Range Master sound. Mm. So I was thinking that we could use it again, but not use the amp for the main drive and then add in the range bit, but lose the gain on the pedal. Yeah, but then we were talking a bit further and then we were like, well, why don't we just recreate the original? Because if the Sabre Cadabra provides Tony Iommi in a pedal, mm. why don't we just try and recreate it without the help of the Sabre Cadabra, but with, get it just in case. With a different pedal. Yeah, so we need they're the two master. things. So, yeah, and my argument is that the Range Master is built into there anyway. However... Wouldn't it be nicer to do it with an amp cranked and a Range Master? I see where you're coming from, and I like your purest views. So, what I think we should do then is get both. Yeah. And if one really, really fails, we can use the other as a backup. Fail safe. So, since we did the without busting, Laney have released a treble booster, but a signature Iomi thing. So, 
Unfortunately, they're on pre-order right now. Mm. Otherwise, that would have been a really easy win. Yeah, it would. Um, so we're going to get the Caitlin bread again, mm -hmm. as we said. Um, but then we're also looking at a range master. Basically, is a treble booster. So we're looking at other treble booster options. There's the Jam Rooster. There's the Jam Rooster. It's extremely boutique, extremely expensive, uh, three two nine. Um, but we're hoping that that'll add a lot and be great. There's a Union treble booster and Tysco as well. There are, yeah, there's quite a few options in the world of treble boosting. But we also want to get an Echoplex preamp because we feel like whenever we're doing one of these vintage artists, like classic rockers. that you can really, it really adds to that tone to use the Echoplex preamp. Mm. Sometimes it's useless, but in, it's always worth having it to try. It, it, I think that also works when we're using like more affordable amps to mm. give it like a, a lift. So oh, we can try. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Should we go see what it sounds like? Let's do that. Return to the video room. We are back in the video room. In this, what would you say? Like early black metal adventure, this satanic crusade? I mean, I would say <laughs> the foundations of heavy metal. I would too, I would too. But at the time it was like, you know. I think, you know, bands like Black Sabbath, that was heavy metal in those days. Oh, totally, totally. Mm -hmm. They were banned in churches and all that stuff. They were like the equivalent of Meshuggah now. Yeah. Well, not Meshuggah, because obviously there's loads of metal bands that are really heavy, but point being that back then, that was really heavy. Really heavy, really heavy. And, um, but an awesome, iconic sound. Yeah, and actually, this is another one of those where I think the gear being more expensive and having no budget has allowed us to get closer, to me at least, from yeah. what I can remember from the last one. Sure. <laughs> pretty happy with how it's come out actually. It's really cool, yeah. It's a really nice sound and uh, we've got the, the lane is attenuated so yeah. it's at a manageable level but with nice saturation. Yeah, yeah, we, we put it into the Boss Tube Amp Expander literally for attenuation just so that we could we could gun it because otherwise it'd be really loud. Like it's, an, it's a point to point amp I think this is, hand wide, right. so it's, it's mega loud. Even though it's only 30 watts, it's yeah. still, it still kicks. But to be fair, it's giving me that vintage kind of Black Sabbath tone with what we've ended up with. Um, so let's start with the guitar. I, I'll probably just say this now, we didn't use the Jam Waco, even though it's really good. We, we didn't. didn't. We, we didn't, didn't need to use it. And we actually, the Jam uh, Rooster... Isn't in stock. Isn't in stock. So we ended up with this Tysco treble booster. I think it's called treble booster, but the name's in Japanese, I believe, so I can't really read what it says. But that being said, you can actually, I've got a really good idea, give me a sec. Are you about to Google Translate that? Yeah, by photo. Okay. Booster. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best thing I've ever done. Is that recording? Yeah. Booster. Master. Master. Okay, okay. Booster. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. But anyway, this Tys we'll call it the Tysco Booster for this episode. Sure. This has replaced the the Jam Rooster. So yeah. Booster, Booster. Yeah, yeah, it's close enough. Yeah. But anyway, let's start with the guitar. This is the Gibson SG, and I believe this is the what did they call this one? It's so an modern. SG Modern, yeah. yes. 
So as you can see, there's a trans black finish going on uh, with like a flame maple, well, it looks like flame maple at least. And these kind of see-through top hat knobs, which I, I guess is a modern thing. Uh, and they've kind of chromed it up, put locking tuners on it. You know, it's still very reminiscent of an SG, like, for the most part, it just looks a little bit more flashy, doesn't it? Mm. And the, the the weird thing is that the jack input's on the side, which I find really weird. Yeah. Should be sat on top there. Okay. But it stays in tune good. It's, you know, it's easy to play, set up nice, all the rest of it, so that's good. <laughs> Trusty Echoplex preamp. Yeah, we've used that a lot. It's such a good pedal. And it still comes through. Yeah. How, what, how much did you kind of balance between these two? Well, so we went with your thought process, which was with the Sabra Cadabra, we'll use very little gain, well, no gain and very little volume and push the range all the way up. No gain and no volume, okay. Yeah, so I'm I was thinking of using this, this end like a tube screamer and then the range bit as an addition. Yeah, well, the range bit I had on full mm. without any gain and a tiny bit of volume because basically I'm balancing the overall level of the amp between the gain there, the gain here, the gain here, the, well, the volume here and the volume here. Cause, oh, you got but, them all on? Yeah, because it, it's kind of like you can really, really affect the sound depending on, you know, what, how much of each one you've put in. So they're all on. Um, so after Sabra Kadabra, we've got the Tysco Pooster. And then from that is the Waco, which we didn't use. And then straight into the Laney BL30, which really has nailed the sound, to be mm. honest. Uh, I'm into in the treble input in input one. And really, I, I guess... Your treble's we, dialed out a bit. <laughs> yeah, treble's on three, okay. middle's on zero, gain is on six, between six and seven. There was, it was a bit of a... Um, bit of a fight. Yeah, like micro adjustments again with this one, um, w between the amp and the pedals and playing off against each other, really. They're, all, mm. they're amazingly low. Yeah. Um, and obviously, but obviously there's a treble booster in the mix with a bunch more added. So this is the sound of the SG straight into the Laney. <laughs> So, I guess you could say it's kind of reminiscent in the fact that it's not very present and it's not very like, it's quite fluffy. It's quite muffled, yeah. Which is kind of, I guess you could say that, I feel like there's part of that in Tony Army's sound and then you add the presence on top of the other stuff. Yes. Which is what we've done. Yeah, fine. Well, should we go through one by one? Yeah, so this is before Echoplex. <laughs> then with. <laughs> so it actually smooths it. Yeah, it makes it a bit clearer. Yeah. Okay. And then when you throw on that, that's going to hopefully give us a bit more of the rasp. So Fair. way more gain, and actually it's taken a lot of the level out. Yep. Because I'm pushing the level with the Tysco Pooster. <laughs> so here we go. So overall, because this amplifier doesn't have a master volume, we've had to run the gain higher, which is in turn going to increase the volume. Yes. And then we're controlling it, the volume of the amp, with these. With these. So in theory, if you weren't attenuating, mm. you could just sack off one or two of these, yeah. run more of the amp. Yeah. Okay, fine. But That's because we're trying to do it for sounding like exactly like, as close as we can, sure, sure. it's been a balancing act, which is why what, what, the amount of levels Out of curiosity, mm. what happens if you bin off this and this, and, and we just 
Do you remember these settings? Well, yeah. it doesn't matter now, does it? It doesn't. Right, let's do it. I mean, it's, Hi, it's closer, but I'd probably back off some of the gain on the amp sure. a bit. It's, it's it's somewhere there. We'd have to probably dial it in a little bit. It's like bit a more modern closer. version of his sound with more yeah, gain. Sure. Um, so there is an argument to and say it's much that, louder in the room. Yeah, yeah. But there's an argument to say that all you need is the Sabra Cadabra. Yeah. We're not arguing that point. What we are saying is using all this gear, you know, ridiculous amounts of money. Without blowing our heads off. Yes. We can get somewhere close. Matthew, you using bass. And actually, I've seen a lot of comments recently saying we need to factor in the bass budget as well in this. Yes, we do. So this is a Fender American Performer Precision Bass in yeah. a very classic kind of three-tone burst going on here. Um, really nice looking bass. It, I kind of chose one that's fairly reminiscent of Geezer Butler um, with this rosewood fretboard here. It's about 1,050 quid, okay. so definitely within budget. Um, and that runs directly into this, which you can see behind me perhaps, which is the Ashdown Studio 12. Um, that comes in at about 299, so okay. for my bass rig about just under 1,400 pounds. Fair play. Well, I mean, it's a re relatively simple rig in terms of bass for Black Sabbath. Sure, sure. At this point. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, he did introduce a few pedals along the way, but hopefully that kind of... He was also a finger player, which I'm not, so hopefully it works out. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. There is sound like Black Sabbath, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, by busting the bank. Yes. Let us know how you think we did. Um, all the links to all the gear is in the description box below. Yes. Comment about any other bands and artists you'd like us to sound like. On that note, I've been Rabia. And I've been Matt. And this is Sound Like on Anderson's TV. Ciao for now. <laughs>